What's up out there? Welcome back to more Melver Idol, and today I want to talk about melee gear progression. Uh, somebody asked me a question about it the other day, and they asked if I'd make a video about it. I gave a quick answer and said, you know, here's kind of some of my thoughts about it. And then I said, yeah, I'll look at doing a video. And I spent probably about a week or so gathering up information. This is probably going to be a lengthy video, so let's dive into it. I have a copy of my standard account. Um, this has almost all the items in the game on it. So I have a quick resource to pretty much everything. Uh, not quite everything at this point, because this is a copy from before beating the game or beating the expansion, but that's irre irrelevant. The conversation we're going to have is about the base game and the base game only, and this is going to cover melee gear. I will do another one for ranged and another one for magic. These are going to be fairly lengthy, I think, so it's probably good to break them up. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with the expansion. Uh, we've got some other videos on stuff for the expansion because the expansion has you moving around. Uh, the base game is pretty linear, and so it's not that hard to... It, it's much easier to document. The expansion has a little nuance to it, and it's better to... I could probably do some videos on it, but I or a video, but I'd rather just do the base game right now. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, this is not going to be a complete... Uh, guide to everything and be all end all of everything. This is going to be a hopefully quick and dirty guide to get you through um, a general idea of how progression goes. There is some easy stuff to it, um, but there is some nuance to it. First and foremost, I want to point out that there is a wiki button down here. This takes you to the official wiki for the web, the official website wiki or the official wiki website. Uh, this is a great resource. This is where I pretty much get a lot of, you know, if I need something, if I need to know where to go get something, I typically go out to the wiki. I don't necessarily go through that button. I just have it on a separate browser, but it's a great resource. There's a lot of guides for how to beat various dungeons and a lot of the information that I get came from there. The other information I get came from inside the game. You can view stats on anything and it will tell you certain information. Um, so Wiki's good. Now, if you just want to get a quick answer and not listen to all the rest of this, however long it's going to be, the TLDR is to follow what smithing does and just follow this all the way across. That's the easiest thing I can tell you is start off with bronze and iron because they're both level one gear. So you're going to start with bronze gear. As soon as you can get up to iron gear, uh, work your way into that because it's both level one, but iron is better than bronze. And then work your way into Steel, Mithril, Adamant, Rune, and Dragon as you can. Uh, these come up, let's see, Iron is level 1, I believe. Um, oops, Steel is level 5. I think Mithril's level 20. Yeah. And then Adamant should be 30. And then Rune is 40. And Dragon is 60. Yeah, so there's a little bit of a jump. But if you follow this progression all the way from uh, bronze to dragon, that's the simplest, easiest thing. And if you're doing a hardcore combat only character, uh, the way I would describe it is to go to the Castle of Kings and work your way through there. The bronze gear will come from Golbins and Zombie Hands and Zombies. These drop iron and steel and bronze and iron and bronze stuff there and then once you get through the golbins the zombie hands the zombies and stuff like that and you can start working on the steel knight black knight mithril knight adamant knight and rune knight uh the black knight his gear which i this is the stuff that i don't have i want to say this is like level 10 or 15 or something like that it's kind of in the middle there so it fills a gap uh and you don't necessarily have to equip all the gear from each one of these as you move on you can equip individual parts but Follow the smithing side for any other account. Follow the Castle of Kings for hardcore combat only. And once you get into dragon gear and things like that, the dungeons, when you get into the volcano and the, the god dungeons, that's where you're going to start getting all the higher tier gear. So getting into the volcano, you can do with rune gear and beat that. You can manually eat through it. Anyway, that's the TLDR. So... Let's dive into this in a more in-depth look. First and foremost, there is a lot of gear in this game, and there's a lot of things that you can just simply ignore. So don't necessarily feel like you have to get everything in the game and try it. Um, 
unless you're going for a completion account, then you'd want to maybe step through everything. But for the most part, uh, you could probably start at level one, skip up to level 10, skip up to level 20, skip up to level 40. You know what I mean? The more it's going to sound obvious, but the longer you let your uh, attack, strength, defense, stuff like that go, the more uh, you're going to unlock. So uh, if you don't know, attack determines what weapon you can equip and defense determines what armor you can equip. Strength is how much damage you do. And the more damage, the more XP you get. So you want your strength to be as high as possible at any given time and then follow it with attack and defense. Okay. Game modes can affect the decisions that you make. If you're playing standard and hardcore, you're going to have every single skill unlocked right from the start. You don't have to unlock anything. You're not barred from anything. So you can do what I did with my standard account and then just crap. You can get all your skills built up to 99, all your non-combat skills, you can build up to 99 and then go into combat. And then as you go through combat, you can just take the stuff that you've already created and just equip it as you go. And boom, there you go. The one thing that I did not know when I first started playing was damage reduction, which we're going to get into here in a little bit, but most gear can be upgraded. So just keep that in mind. Adventure accounts start off kind of like hardcore combat only in the sense that you can only do combat. So you basically have to unlock skills before you can use them, but you can unlock non-combat skills. So you could go through on a, a um, adventure account and do kind of what I do is to run through, well, I would start off with like plants and maybe chickens or something like that. You're going to work your way up because you need to build up food and, you know, get, build up money. And it takes a little while to get there. But then I go to like Golbins to try to get uh, the shield for a little more defense. And the shield's upgradable, by the way. And then the axe does a little more damage. Uh, and then you come over here, you can work on zombies for the armor here. All of this armor is upgradable. Um, take silver and gold bars. Zombies drop a little bit better stuff that is upgradable. And then at some point I start working into the castle of Kings and get that stuff. So that's kind of how I work that. And once I've got smithing unlocked, I go full bore into mining and smithing or however I do it, thieving bars, mining up bar, uh, the, or it doesn't matter however you do it. But then I go into smithing and start creating everything up to dragon gear, level up, equip the dragon gear, and then march on. Now, hardcore combat only. Um, I've I've not yet done that. I do have I do want to do a hardcore combat only character. Um, I just haven't had the time to start it yet. But hardcore combat only, you do not have any com non combat skills ever. Everything is completely locked out. The only thing you can do is combat skills. So you basically have to work your way up through that. That is definitely a far difference than anything else because you can only get things from combat. So. Oh, and then speedrun modes. Uh, we've had some various different speedrun modes, and things can be affected by that. The The vast majority of things work the same way, but occasionally a different weapon will float to the top as being far superior than other stuff, or maybe magic's more superior in one of the speedrun modes than other stuff. It just varies. Okay, so uh, like I said earlier, you want to level up attack, strength, and defense. Um, I generally, th this is some general stuff here. I generally raise everything by 10 levels at a time. So I'll take strength to 10, attack to 10, defense to 10. That way you don't have anything lagging behind. Everything kind of comes up together. At a certain point, you're going to want to run strength up to say 80, 85, something like that, and then work the other two up. So I run maybe 10 at a time for a while, and then I may run 20 for strength and then bring attack up and then bring defense up. Basically, Level 85, 90-ish, somewhere in there, uh, well, for attack, but 85 for defense, that's when you get the god gear, so that's kind of what I shoot for is to get that level, because once I get into the god dungeons, I just equip gear, and I'm ready to go. And, of course, all the skills being higher when you attack stuff, it's better, just generally better. Um, now, depending on what game mode you're playing, like if you're doing hardcore combat only, stuff like that, uh, adventure mode... Um, you may need to be significantly higher level than the gear you're trying to get. So if you're trying to go kill, say, Adamant Knights, these are pretty tough. You might have Mithril gear, but you may not have the upgrades in place or the things that you need to really tackle Adamant Knights and idle them for a while. 
Uh, same thing with Rune Knights. Uh, the lower on the tier, the more often they drop gear, so it's easier to get gear out of them. The higher on this list, the harder it is to get the gear out of them. So if you're trying to go for a combat uh, source of gear, just know that you may need to be significantly higher level and spend a lot of time grinding out stuff for um, silver and gold to upgrade everything before you can really get into these. And, and food's always a problem. Prayer points are always a problem. So um, depending on game mode, you may have to over level to get to things. You can build strength if you have the ability to do it. You can build strength from the fishing area uh, with the, with the oh, what are these things called? The barbarian fishing area with leaping trout and leaping broadfish. And there's one more. I think I've passed it. Leaping salmon. They will build your strength up. You can do that in the background. Like if you want to level fishing, the fish you catch are pretty much useless. You can sell them for money, but they do bring your uh, fishing skill level up and they will bring your um, strength level up by using them. Not a bad way to go if you can do it, but just know that it takes away from both fishing and you're going to get some fishing, but you won't get as good a fishing as you was would be fishing up a better fish. You're not going to get any fish that can be healed or used for food, and your strength will go up slowly, but it will go up. So it's kind of a trade-off, but you can use fishing for the, the barbarian area. Okay, you can mix um, gear from other combat styles. So... I tend to use the melee shield with magic and ranged, and I tend to use the ranged van braces for the other two. So there's no reason you can't mix and match, especially once you get into the God Dungeons, uh, which is what I'm about to do with my adventure account. I'm just now getting ready to go through the Air God Dungeon, so I want to make sure that my range level is high enough to equip the gear and once it is, I'll be able to go through this, get a piece of gear, put it on my melee character, and that just raised my damage reduction quite a bit so I can start working on all these higher tier dungeons much easier. You're not going to get the bonuses that you would. Like, it's ranged gear, so you're going to get ranged bonuses, which you're not going to get for a melee character, but the damage reduction is what you really want out of that. And speaking of damage reduction... Nearly all of the melee armor has upgrades that requires gold and silver. So there's five pieces that have upgrades, which is going to be your helmet, your boots, your pants, shirt, and shield. Well, plate body, plate legs, the boots, the helmet, anything that's got this little upgrade button, you'll upgrade with silver bars, and then the second upgrade will go with gold bars. You do not get a damage reduction bonus until you upgrade to the gold side of it. So... You really want to upgrade everything as much as possible if it's feasible. Now, I, I would not advocate going, unless you have smithing and you just got a big stack of, of gold and silver bars, I would not advocate going from bronze to iron to steel to mithril to adamant to rune to dragon and upgrade all of it. It's going to get expensive because it costs you gold, it costs you silver bars, and it costs gold bars. So it gets fairly expensive. Unless you're doing a completion account, I could justify it, but... Otherwise, it's a lot of extra work. Um, and if you're going to skip, say, steel right over into mithril gear or something like that, or skip maybe even into adamant gear, your best bet is to spend the money, spend the money, gold, and silver bars on the, the next set of gear than on the previous one. But that said, you can get into some of these dungeons a lot easier and quicker the higher the damage reduction you have. Like, you can take base dragon gear and still not really get through some of the dungeons as well as you can, well... Let's say, let's say you can take um, base adamant gear, a little more grounded scenario here. If you have base adamant gear that's not upgraded, you're going to get further with fully upgraded mithril gear than you will with just the base adamant gear. So keep that in mind. Damage reduction, you generally want to be the highest that you can equip. Um, there are some things that are going to be changing that, but that's just late game stuff. Um, I would never recommend using a uh, two-handed sword. Most all the two-handed swords in this game are garbage. The only two-handed swords that are really any good is once you finally get into the God Dungeon, you get this, uh, the Terran God Sword. This one gives you 8% damage reduction. This is like one of the only swords that has damage reduction in the base game. One of the only two-handed swords. Uh, so like the Ragnar Sword has nothing the only other one that does is the Ultima God Sword, and it's a fusion of all four 
of the God Sword. So it's got all the different stuff built in with 8% damage reduction. So, but it's a level 90 sword and it takes a lot to get. So I, I would not recommend a two-handed weapon at all in any way. Like big old Ron has no damage reduction. So meaning you can, once you get this dragon fire shield, this thing gives you 8% damage reduction. But if you equip, say the, the Glacia God Sword, you have 0% damage reduction. So you're losing 8% by not equipping a single ender weapon. So um, I really don't ever recommend two-handed weapons unless you're killing really low-level content and you want to bump your damage reduction up. They're also a little slower, so I just never recommend them. Um, late game, there are times when you might want to lower your damage reduction just slightly to accommodate some DPS stuff. That's mostly for uh, impending darkness into the mist, stuff like that. Late, late game content, so you're not going to worry about that early on. Uh, as I said earlier, you typically you want to equip the highest level gear that you possibly can. So it doesn't necessarily, unless you have smithing, it doesn't mean step through all the different gear, but if you're going to leave it idling overnight on combat and then come back 20 levels up, equip the better gear, don't equip the worst gear. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to skip all the way over to adamant gear, just equip adamant gear and upgrade it. Um, Gear to get a dungeon clear is going to be different than gear to idle a dungeon. So for me with the volcano, the volcanic cave, I would be trying to get through this. In fact, I just did with my uh, adventure account. I'm going to blow through there with uh, manually healing, mithril gear, adamant gear, rune gear, something along those lines. Probably adamant, a mixture of adamant and rune gear, I think, is what I just did my adventure account with. Um that is not how I'm going to idle it. I'm going to go further and get other gear to come backwards and then idle it. So just getting a manual clear doesn't mean you can idle it and it's going to be much less gear than what you'll come back to idle it with. So um, things change as things go on. Uh, let's talk about weapons specifically. I don't really use daggers. I think they suck. They don't really do much damage. They attack fast, but they don't really do much damage. Uh, the dragons, or I'm sorry, daggers, I don't really use. Swords, I do. Uh, scimitars, I do. Battle axes, I do. And then two-handed swords, I don't. I don't like two-handed swords. They're slow. Um, pretty much that's, I stick to dragon, or, I'm dragon. I stick to swords for attack. And then either the scimitar and the battle or the battle axe for defense and strength. Typically, uh, depends on the weapon, but some weapons are better at defense than others. You just have to go figure out which one is better. And that you find through the item stats. Uh, this one's got a good block bonus on it. It's got a poor stab, uh, uh bonus, but this one would be good for either strength or defense. That's how that's read. Uh, anyway. You'll do fine with that. The axes are a little slower, but eh, whatever. Um, there are some other alternative weapons you can get, like the Almighty Loot that get, that can work for... It's a two-handed weapon, but it gives you like 200% gold. I throw that on, like especially on an adventure account or a hardcore combat-only account, just because it builds a little cash up faster. I don't use them very far, but there's some extra stuff like that that you can use. Armor. I do not ever use any Smith gloves ever unless I have nothing else in the slot and one of them pops up in my uh, loot. I don't ever use them. They have zero damage reduction. There's no upgrade for them. There's nothing. They're just garbage. So I don't ever use these things. There are far better alternatives and that's what I go to. Uh, this is where I would go and look at start using ranged van braces and stuff like that. So, you can also go to the um, Turkle Archers over here in the Arid Plains. These things drop the Desert Wrappings. This is one that I don't usually do, but the de Desert Wrappings have 2% damage reduction. So that's a good kind of early game. I mean, these aren't that hard to get into. They drop these other gloves. Like I said, they suck. But if you don't have anything in the slot and you get one of these and can equip it, it's better than nothing. Desert Wrappings gives you 2% damage reduction. My go-to is over here in the Highlands. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not Highlands, Holy Isles. I like to go into these Paladins. But if you notice, these are all, the Turkle Archers are only at combat level 80. 
Paladin's up at 142, so he's a little more significantly difficult, but the Paladin Gloves are plus 4% damage reduction, and again, you can get into, I think it's the Red Dragon Vambrace's upgraded our 4%. So, I mean, if you can get your range built up and get some range stuff unlocked, you can get that fairly easily. Um, let's see here. Your green, yeah, your 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 green dragon hide vambrace is two percent, blue is three, red is four, black is five, and ancient dragon hide is six. Now that goes from level 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. So you have to have a significant investment into ranged, but once you can get to level 60 in ranged, you can equip the same damage reduction as you can with the um paladin gloves. So which can you get to first? It depends on what you're working on. Uh, I tend to go for the Paladin Gloves because they're kind of an easy thing to get. There is no level requirement on the Paladin Gloves. Um, you can just e get them and equip them, and that's it. There's nothing here. And <clears throat> there's no plus or minus. You get a little strength for melee, but you can equip this on anybody, ranged, magic, whatever. It just works. It's 4% damage reduction, so that's kind of what I go to. Capes. Any cape is better than no cape, so if you have a standard or adventure account or whatever, or a hardcore account and can get into any of these capes and you're leveling up, any cape will provide you some defense. They're not great by any stretch, but any cape you equip, any of these base capes, they offer a little bit of defense. So if you're working on wood cutting or fire making or whatever, and you hit 99, you can actually equip this and it will give you a slight bit of help in combat. It's not much, but there's a slight bit of help there. Now, there is an obsidian cape that you can get from the Adam and Knight. This one is pretty much what you're going to use for hardcore combat only. You want to come get this as quickly as possible, as feasible. Adam and Knights are kind of tough and to idle them and sit, sit long enough to get this drop is a little difficult, but the obsidian cape is really good. Um, this one has no damage reduction. It's just got some buffs for uh, defensive ratings or whatever. If you have a non-hardcore combat only account or character, you can come into thieving. And once you get down to the squire, he drops the, I'm sorry. Yeah. The squire or the knight, they drop this knight's cape. The knight's cape is nice. Uh, this was just added when they when the full game came out, and this gives you 1% damage reduction. So there's a little bit there. Now, this one, okay, you go through that. You can also go through and complete the volcano. So if you go through and manually beat the volcano once and come back, you get the fire cape, and the fire cape has 2% damage reduction. But... There's an alternative that I didn't know about, and I, I don't know if it's been this way the entire time. I don't really ever use it. If you go into the Slayer side and save up 400,000 coin, or 400,000 Slayer coin, it's, a, it's an expensive adventure. But this cape, I think this is my new go-to, is to save up that 400,000, because this cape offers 3% damage reduction. So it's better than any of the capes you're going to get up until the Infernal Cape, which has 4%. But this would get you into the Volcano fairly easy. It's just saving up some Slayer Coin, which is probably a little more of a grind than you want to do early on. But that damage reduction is pretty pretty nice looking to me, in fact. Uh, I feel like. I feel like it's a pretty good, pretty good thing. Now, it, it's got some definite negatives on the stats. But um, if for Magic, at least, it would get you up fairly well. Um, for the damage reduction to get into something, I bet that would work fairly well. So I don't know. That one might get into my rotation. Now, once you get through the, um, volcanic cave a hundred times, it unlocks the infernal stronghold. When you beat this one time, you get the infernal cape and the infernal cape has 4% damage reduction. Now, if you go through and get full completion, full completion, the completion cape gives you 5% of the base game. So that's a lot longer down the road. Uh, I have it on this account, so it, it's nice to go to, but you're not going to have that for a very long time. So the capes that you're limited to is the Knight's Cape, the Obsidian Cape, the, you know, that kind of thing. So on to amulets and rings. When you're coming up, um, one of the first things that you can do is go into this Slayer area here, Penumbra Mummies, they drop the Silver Diamond Ring, 1% damage reduction. 
that's a very good ring for a very long time. So that's about the only damage reduction you're going to get on a ring for a long time. So you can get that fairly early. Uh, these are only level, come at level 29 creatures. So it's early game, not very early, but early. The Elite Amulet of Defense, I think those come from one of these. Might be the Purple Goose. You build up 100 of these, you can get that. Or if you go into the Undead Graveyard and grind this thing out, you have a chance to get the Elite Amulet of Defense there as a whole. And you can also get Mithril and Adamant Gear. So this is not a bad place to go. And that gives you 2% damage reduction, which is very helpful. Uh, of course, you got to build up to the Fury of the Elemental Zodiacs. That's the ultimate um, amulet that you want to get. And I don't see where mine is. It's right here. This thing has 3% damage reduction, plus all the other bonuses that come with it. So it's a good amulet. And then the other one that I would point out is once you get high enough level, this is like a level 60, 50. It's a level 50 ring, but the Sandstorm ring is good. Uh, it comes from over in the Slayer areas. You go into Desolate Plains, Arid Plains. It's the Sand Beast over here. They take a while to get to, and they do a lot of, you know, they do a lot of uh, damage over time. So you got to have a lot of food. It takes a while to get here but they dropped the sandstorm ring. That thing is good for a while. It's not a great ring for very long, but it's got some unavoidable, sort of unavoidable attacks that can help. It hits a lot and can up your DPS. So it's not, it's worth getting at some point if you can. Now, as far as miscellaneous stuff, there's a ton of gear. Like you can see a lot of the, you know, a lot of this is the expansion stuff, but um, there is a lot of gear in the game, like this recoil shield. I don't really ever use. There's the training shield. Um, it's got some XP bonuses and stuff, the absorbing shield and eh, whatever. Um, a lot of this gear is there. It can be used. I don't ever bother with it. Same thing with like the desert saber, the poison dagger, the sanguine blade. They're not great. And by the time you get to them, uh, you're going to have something better typically. So I usually don't bother with them. But again, if you have the opportunity to get them and you don't have anything better, by all means, use them. You're just probably going to have something better by then. So let's step through combat areas real quick. Uh, and this video is getting too long. Maybe I'll cut that out. Really quickly, what I would do, as I mentioned earlier, I would probably go through the Golbans, go over here to Zombie Hands and Zombies, and then as you work your way down, you're going to hit the Castle of Kings. That's going to be well worth going through. No other place in here is really going to get you much gear. So Golden Village, Graveyard, and Castle of Kings is pretty much the places to go. You can go to these Eleran Warriors and get the spear, but it's a two-handed weapon. It's not great. They do drop Mithril and Adamant stuff. Again, I don't use the two-handed stuff. It's garbage. Um, but you can get some upgrades off of them. They're not great. At that point, you're going to be want to be going into um, the Slayer areas. Mummies are good for the amulets and rings that they drop. The statues are really good for sil silver and gold bars if you don't have mining and smithing available. Uh, fierce Devils for the Amulets of Torture for the Fury of the Elemental Zodiacs. Most of the rest of this you can ignore. Uh, purple Monsters for the Amulet of Defense if you need it. Strange Cove, you can ignore all that. You probably won't need them. Highlands, these are where you're going to get the Dragon Claw and the Ancient Claw. Those combine with the Infernal Cores and create the Infernal Claw. Those are really good to get. Toxic Swamps, you can come in here and get this Poison Dagger. It's okay. It's a dagger, but it does poisoning. It's not great. Uh, again, target of opportunity. It's not horrible. Uh, the Arid Plains, aside from the Sandstorm Ring, I don't really bother with anything in here. Um, you can get like the desert saber again, if you don't have anything better at the moment, you can put that on, but the rest of this stuff, maybe the desert wrappings is worth it, but sand treaders, maybe, I don't know. You can get some boots out of these guys too. The turkle riders are pretty low level, but for the most part, I ignore all that. Where it's at is really going to be, uh, in the dungeons. You're going to want to hit the undead graveyard. That's got some good drops to it. My light caves, I tend to just ignore uh, that. You really need magic to go in or range to go through that with. And there's a lot of sleep. I just kind of ignore it. Um, there is no level requirements for any of these dungeons. So as soon as you can do them, you can jump into them. 
Uh, deep sea ship with all this stuff is really good. Ancient swords, okay. There was one speed run we did where it was good. I would typically go for the sunset rapier on this thing instead for a weapon. So once you can clear that and get that weapon, it's good. But you need to work in the ancient claw and the dragon claw and stuff like that. Those are far better. Uh, the rest of the, the frozen coves, okay. I think it's got level 40 gear. What you want to really do is hit up the undead graveyard, the deep sea ship, and then the volcanic cave, get through all of that. Once you can get through the volcanic cave, you will have a chance for ancient gear, and that's where it's at for the melee characters. So get that, get it all upgraded. It's expensive, takes a lot of silver bars, gold bars, but they're available in here as well as winding spithing and statues and whatever else. From there, get the infernal stronghold, get this place cleared out 10 times to get 10 infernal cores. That lets you upgrade the the dragon and ancient claws into the infernal claw that's a great in-game weapon you're going to use for a while then you're going to go through the god dungeons this is where it's just straight linear you're going to get your uh ranged gear out of the air god dungeon your magic gear out of the water god dungeon and your um melee gear out of the earth god dungeon that's pretty much how that goes the difference between the earth god dungeon and the fire god dungeon is this has higher damage reduction the fire god stuff has slightly less damage reduction i think it's seven versus eight percent but it's made for killing things quicker. So you can get some, uh, there's some really good stuff out of here. The amulet that does um, stun and things like that. And then this stuff upgrade, some of this stuff upgrades later on. Into the Mist doesn't give you anything but a passive slot. Nah, it might give you a pet or something, but uh, the passive slot, which is this thing here, if you've never seen that, that is really good. Uh, it's a kind of a race to get to Into the Mist. That unlocks a bunch of other stuff too that you can get. It also unlocks the Slayer area of Dark Waters. And once you've cleared that, you can come in here and get your Tier 90 uh, Tidal Edge Fragments. You collect 100 of those, and now you've got a Tier 90 weapon, Level 90 weapon. So that's your single-handed sword, and you can put it with a shield. Uh, that's pretty much going to be it for the most part. You will unlock the Unhallowed Wasteland. This has upgrades for all of the stuff from the Air God... Water God, Fire God, Earth God, all that kind of dungeons. All of these upgrade a ring and a gauntlet from each one of those. Uh, these are kind of mix and match. They're kind of made for specific styles, like one's made for magic, but you can use them for other stuff because one prevents bleed, one prevents stun, or has a chance to prevent stun. It doesn't completely prevent it, but prevents bleed, helps prevent bleed, helps prevent stun, stuff like that. So you can mix and match these as you need to. Uh, again, this is really high end stuff and you're going to be going through, uh, the dark waters and the unhallowed wasteland to clear out everything for, um, the impending darkness event. And then once you've built up and completed the impending darkness event, you're on to the expansion. So <sighs> it's been a very long video, a lot of talking. Hopefully this has been helpful and this has covered the entire base game everything you could want for melee combat in the base game and how I generally approach it. Uh, things start off very, the, if you want to look at it this way, things start off on a point because you're going to start off with just bronze, like a bronze ax or dagger or something. And then as you widen out the content, you're going to unlock stuff at a certain point, it's going to funnel into the volcano. So it's going to narrow down again, and then it's going to widen back up a little bit with the God dungeons and stuff, but then it narrows back down again. So it becomes very linear at a certain point and that's straight up, that's all there is. So there's a wide berth in the middle, but it kind of funnels down into a point and then a line. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful and that will do it for this one. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.